We have to remember first that there are many complex systems in which theory cannot quite predict the behavior of the system. And even if we look at the natural sciences and phenomena such as earthquakes and tsunamis and hurricanes and you know, typhoons and things like that, results that uh, can be catastrophic and certainly things we'd like to predict if we could. And we could minimize the number of deaths, etc. And still we're not there. When we talk about financial markets, we have the same level of complexity plus, I'd say, two additional complications. First, we don't really have the equivalent of the you know, flow equations that the physicists use. Secondly, we're dealing with a system that reacts to our own predictions. So if I had a mathematical model that would predict a hurricane, the hurricane would not say, okay, in this case I'm not coming because I can surprise you or give up. If I had a mathematical model that could predict reliably a financial crisis in 10 days, the crisis would happen tomorrow because I will not be the only one with it. Everyone would have it. So in principle, it's more difficult to try to predict a system that reacts to our own predictions. So we probably will never be able to fully predict things like that. Well, theory ideally would predict everything numerically accurately, but we're not there. But it doesn't mean that theory is useless. Okay, it can be used because we go back and we say, okay, what happened there? For instance, we can see that there are problems of information and some problems that we understood in very simple two by two examples that we can put on a blackboard and we see how they can influence a system such as this where not everyone has the same information and people might have incentive not to reveal all the information and things of that nature. We can say more about what happens when the system is very complex and some people were investing money directly or indirectly without quite understanding what they're doing. And we say, okay, maybe we can understand better what happens when there's too high level of complexity for people to know what it is that they are investing in. So theory can still be useful as you know, a guideline, as a way to critique a certain reasoning, to see what problems exist there. We don't need to throw away theory just because it's not perfect. It can still be useful as a way of thinking about the world, even without giving very precise numerical predictions. So I believe a good decision is one that is a result of a dialogue between theory and intuition. It's something that does not ignore the intuition because theory will never be able to give the be-all and end-all answer. Also something that does not ignore theory because intuition is known to lead us astray and there are a lot of evidence from the psychological literature about the kind of errors and biases that we have. So a good decision is one that would incorporate both and we use theory to critique the intuition but also intuition to tell us what theory might be missing. So I guess this depends on definitions. I mean sometimes I think of intuition as that intelligence that is not yet understood which means that by definition we cannot teach it because once we understood it and we start teaching it, it's no longer intuition, it's an algorithm. But it does mean that what is considered to be an intuition can be studied, can be maybe formalized, can be shared with others. Whether we still call it intuition or not is not so important. What is important is that, yes, we could start with things that some people feel intuitively and try to see why and try to find regularities. On the other hand, that intuition can also benefit from using theory to test itself, to check whether it makes sense and things of that nature. So I believe that ideally uh, it could help us control uncertainty. Not always will we really be in a sense of control, but at least we might know what it is that we do not control, what kind of risk we are exposed to, what kind of uncertainties are out there that we may or may not uh, want to have. Uh, the world is very uncertain. Many things change in our lives. We see a lot of mobility, geographical, social, and lots of things are happening. People are much more aware of uncertainty than that exists in their life than maybe they used to be, which means that uh, it's good to be aware of it. Probably we can't control everything, but we can better understand when can we quantify it, when can we put on it, say, probabilities and what do we do with them, when maybe we cannot put on that probability, what do we do when we cannot. So I think in some sense it is a step in the direction of controlling, 
or at least managing or at least dealing with. 